Hi everyone, I'm Megan Spire. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now more than ever before, social media is a must for companies in the wholesale apparel space. That's why we are dedicating a whole Bella Campus live event to one of our favorite platforms, Instagram. This visual social media space is perfect for decorated apparel sellers. In fact, Bella Canvas uses Instagram to the max to reach decorators, distributors, fashion pros, and end users. Get ready for a crash course in everything you need to know to make an impact on Instagram. And we've got a very special round table of decorators who are knocking it out of the park with their Instagram posts and stories. They are here today to share their insider secrets with you. Welcome back to those of you who joined our last broadcast and welcome to all of our new faces here today. We appreciate your feedback from our last Bella Campus Live event and we're so glad you enjoyed the content. For anyone who missed it, we talked about the future of work, how, when, and where we do our jobs and serve customers in this new normal. You can check out our prior episodes anytime by streaming them from our website at bellacanvas.com slash live or catch them on our Bella Canvas YouTube channel. Before we dive in, a few things to note. We'll be live for about 45 minutes, including the Q&A portion at the end. If you have any questions, shoot them over to us in the comments section. If you need to leave, don't worry, we'll send you a link so you can replay this webinar later. So let's jump right into all things Instagram with Claire, our content marketing manager from Bella Canvas. Hi, Claire. Hi, Megan. Thank you so much for the intro. Let's get started. So with 1 billion users per month, Instagram delivers the most engagement per follower and is the second most downloaded app in the Apple Store out of nearly 2 million other apps. If you're wondering why your decorated apparel business should be on Instagram, I'm glad you asked. 81% of people use Instagram to help research products and services, so your business needs to be visible on this platform. We're going to give you a crash course on how to use connecting on Instagram to boost your business. Let's start with content. Good content is what draws new followers to your account and keeps them coming back. That means being true to your brand voice and being open about what your company is committed to, whether it's sustainability or inclusivity. Remember, authentic content is your goal. So what kind of posts and stories should you include in your content mix? Here are some ideas. Show close-up images of t-shirts or hoodies you've printed, embroidered, or heat press to spark your followers' imaginations. Try showing behind the scenes of your shop. People especially love to see your decoration equipment in action. Or what's your customer's number one goal that you can help them with? Show them how-to solutions for their marketing challenges. So let's get into the nitty gritty of creating great posts. First up, your captions. They need to stop a scroller in their tracks. And remember, the longer someone spends reading your post and engaging with it, the better your post ranks with Instagram's algorithm. And if your post gets enough engagement, it might even end up on the Explore page. Killer captions encourage likes, comments, and even traffic to your website. Ultimately, you want to inspire your followers to take action. So let's jump into some quick hacks for writing killer captions. First, mirror your brand voice. Your captions should reflect your brand personality. Second, write a compelling first line. Think of it as the way you look at a subject line. It needs to encourage someone to read more. For example, use a hard-hitting stat or trigger an emotional response. Or you can even ask a question that they're likely asking themselves. You can also work those emojis. Try inserting them at the beginning of your caption to catch a scroller's eye. Try including a strong call to action. Ask for comments on a post or ask for followers to double tap if they agree. You can also ask them to tag someone else. Example of this are tag someone who needs to hear this message or tag someone who would totally wear this t-shirt. Bottom line, make your call to actions or CTAs as we call them fun and easy to do. You can also work your hashtags. When you type a hashtag into the caption editor, Instagram will show you how many posts exist with that hashtag. So vary your hashtags so you can try lots of different ones and learn what's perform the best for you. Lastly, think of your caption as a microblog. Writing a longer, more personal caption helps to share a story, like a customer success story or a cool way your shop raised money for a cause. That helps you connect with your followers on a deeper level. So don't be intimidated by photography. You don't need fancy equipment. All you need is your phone and the Instagram app. The name Instagram means to capture things in the moment and not to spend so much time over editing and planning your photos. 
let's talk about some tips for taking the most appealing shots. My first tip is to use natural light. Forgo your flash for natural light and you'll get richer, brighter photos. If you can't shoot outside, take your shots near windows or in well-lit rooms. If it's nighttime, look for ambient lighting like store windows. Also try to avoid overexposure. Of course you can brighten a photo with editing tools, but you can't really fix an overexposed shot. To prevent this, adjust the lighting on your screen or tap your finger on the brightest part of the frame to adjust before snapping your photo. And lastly, think about composition. Three simple ways to achieve excellent composition are center your model or product. You can also use balanced asymmetry by placing the focal point off center and balancing it with another object. And finally, you can use the rule of thirds by dividing your shot into a three by three grid. You create balance when you align the subjects or objects in the photo along the grid lines. So if you're looking to repost us, here are the platforms where you can find pre-created content from Bella Canvas. Check out images.bellacanvas.com to find images of all your favorite Bella Canvas styles. You can also visit our Vimeo channel to download your favorite videos produced by our in-house production team. And if you're looking to repost from our Instagram page, I highly suggest you download the repost app for, the fast, for some fast sharing abilities. Now that you know how to create and choose the content, let's put all of that information to good use. There are many benefits to transitioning your profile from personal to business. Having a business profile gives you access to more tools and functions, including analytics on your posts and stories. Get your content in front of more people by using the ads tool to boost your best performing posts and stories. Your business profile will also allow customers another easy point of contact as it hosts your email, phone number, website, and address. Also, if you have a Facebook business, business page, be sure to connect your new Instagram account to that as well. Here are a couple of best practices to get your business account up and running like a pro. Set up a schedule. You can also use tools for this like Planoly or Later. If you're not familiar with these applications, Planoly and Later are visual planning tools that let you plan, schedule, publish, and measure the results of your Instagram post. You can also set up or sync to your Facebook page and Shopify account. This way, when you're uploading products to Instagram, they are also shoppable. And in our industry, it's not all about business here. Most of the time, it's actually about the relationships you build. So Instagram is the ultimate place to build community. How you interact with your followers will be a key factor in the way they perceive your brand. Put yourself in their shoes. If you were engaging with a brand, how would you want to be talked to? How would you feel if your favorite brand reposted your picture? Would it keep you as a returning loyal customer? We're going to guess it's pretty likely to have a positive outcome. There's really nothing better than when your clients wear your decorated apparel and post those photos on their Instagram accounts. So give them a shout out. Work user-generated content into your calendar that gets your clients involved on your Instagram page. This is a great way to engage your customers and show potential customers the loyalty your brand inspires. Let's talk about customer service and tone of comments now. A large part of your interaction with customers via Instagram is customer service. If your following is on the larger side, you might have an overflowing inbox with comments and DMs from customers asking general questions about how to work with you, their latest order, or even complaints. So first, let's look at some important stats about customer service in social media. 80% of customer inquiries on social media go unanswered. 88% of buyers are less likely to purchase from a company that doesn't respond to questions on social media. And 30% of buyers will actually go to a competitor if they don't receive a response at all. The good news is that customers whose questions do get answered spend 20 to 40% more dollars with that company. So here are some simple tips to avoid engagement catastrophe with your customers. If you've switched to a business account, make sure your customer service email is either in your bio or part of your contact button for easy communication. If DMs and comments are too much, you can respond to messages and comments on your desktop through the Facebook web page, or you can consider using a customer support tool that lets you view all comments and DMs in one place. Also, I suggest creating a pre-written answer sheet for your most frequently asked questions to save some time. Just remember to address your customers by name and personalize your responses. 
As we've mentioned, maintaining consistency is key. Over time, you will learn the more often you consistently engage with your audience, your relationship with your community will only get stronger. When you have a group of people who know, like, and trust your brand, you'll begin to see a greater ROI with prospects turning into repeat clients. Now, we know this may sound like a lot of information, but it is all possible to achieve. To show you that it can be done, we're bringing in two of our favorite decorators who we believe use Instagram to its full potential to elevate their business. In this round table, we'll talk with Brett Bowden, owner of Printed Threads out of Fort Worth, Texas, as well as Kevin Oakley, co-owner of Stoked on Printing out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Together, they will share expert tips on how their shops have grown their Instagram. Gain maybe followers in order to gain new customers, but it's also a great marketing tool for us to use for our customers. So being able to show off cool things that they're doing and, uh, and promote them. And kind of the hope there is that if we promote our customers, then the, the feeling will be mutual. A uh, portfolio, if you will, like showing when, especially like when we're on a call with somebody, it could be like, hey, I'm going to pull up this quick video of showing this process that um, you're asking about, you know, so we have a, a pretty good portfolio of different things we do. It sounds like you both focus a little bit on the behind the scenes content play. Is that the main content that works for you guys? And how did you determine what was working for you on Instagram specifically? We want the customers or friends or whoever's following us on Instagram to see like, we enjoy this, you know, one of, one of our core values at Printed Threads is driven by the craft. Like we want it to actually seem that way because it is. So when you see people that are having a good time and they're excited about what they do and they're proud of their work, like the end result is just gonna feel better overall. So if we can show that process and I think it comes to life as a product that is more valuable than something that you have no idea how it was made. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, and I think it just kind of gives a little bit of humanity behind it too. Um, it's like, hey, we're a company full of people, you know, we're not just like machines, uh, you know, because a lot of people think, you know, with t-shirts, it's like a digital machine that's printing everything. It's like, no, there's like a lot of uh, human touch involved in this entire process, whether it's the person you call that answers or the person cleaning the screen or the person printing the shirt, you know, um, I think it just kind of gives a little bit of perspective to when uh, people are kind of like, oh, well, you know, this should have just been a, like an automated process. And it's like, well, no, like, look, this is, you know, uh, you know, this is Ashley or this is, you know, Fernando or somebody who's like a part of this process. Um, and it's not just like this corporation or whatever some people think about businesses. Because you guys are so transparent with your customers on social media, do you feel like you're getting more of a positive response from them and, and they're coming back as returning customers due to that? What probably the initial goal of social media just as a platform in general was to create a community. And I think what we try to do is, is create that community and, and, you know, show, show our employees doing things, show off our customers. And it creates this kind of fun thing where like if a customer comes and picks up their shirt and they see a person that they've seen on the internet, they're like, Oh, you know, you, yeah. <laughs> and like, and the same thing, like when you're out in the wild, like uh, it, the, the opposite thing happens when, when, you know, we've printed a shirt and we've highlighted that shirt. And then one employee that works here is out and they're at a bar and they see the shirt that, that we printed or that we highlighted, it just kind of creates this like fun, cool feeling. It gives you that like extra ounce of pride. And I feel like if we can kind of create that community and say like, hey, we're gonna support you as a company, we're gonna help advertise you guys as a company. And then they kind of, you know, if we create these videos about their company or create a video about the process of this shirt being printed and we post it and then they share it. And when they share it on their platform, they're promoting us. So it kind of creates this cool like yin yang relationship of like, we're patting each other's back. We're, we, it becomes more than just a, uh, a client and a vendor, right? It creates this like kind of tighter relationship. Sounds like social media is a pretty strong part of both of your businesses. Would you say that it's really crucial into how your business functions and grows and succeeds? I kind of look at it as like, that's our advertising budget. And like the people that click through, the people that, that fall into our funnel, um, that, that was our cost of acquisition was 
this salary. Right. And I think that's a point that a lot of people forget is the advertising side of it is like, you might be getting Brett, like you might be getting more business because of your presence on social media. If, cause you're more searchable compared to the guy that's, you know, a mile down the road from you doing the same thing. So I think that's good for a lot of businesses, like small businesses to know if they're on Etsy or if they're small print shops that just having an Instagram account in general can help put you above the guy that doesn't have it. So it's a great point. Yeah. And, and also just to add one quick thing, like with custom t-shirts, it's generally not like a buy now product, right? It's not like I could put like buy now for, you know, a hundred t-shirts and with like, you know, all these things like those work but they don't, they're not as effective as like a product, like a physical product, like, hey, buy this now and it's getting shipped out today and it's gonna get to you tomorrow, you know? But it's like, a, it's a slow burn, you know? It's like, okay, I saw these guys, they print t-shirts. Okay, cool, you know? And then if we pop up two weeks later, like, oh yeah, those guys print t-shirts. Well, two months down the road, that customer might, might need to buy t-shirts and they go, you know what? I saw this guy twice, you know, in my feed that prints t-shirts, you know? So it's kind of like, it's a slow burn type of thing. Whereas like, I think it's insanely crucial for brands, you know, or like if you're selling on Etsy, if you're selling on Shopify to have those types of things, cause you do have a buy now product. Um, whereas social media is like insanely powerful for those types of things. But to that, is there any last minute tips that you guys would like to offer the world out there uh, based on how successful you guys have been at Instagram? I would say if you look at our Instagram and it might look really polished. And that's actually something that I am having internal qualms with is looking too polished. And I think a lot of people might look at that and look and think like, well, I can't produce that. So I'm not gonna post stuff on Instagram because it won't compete with printed threads or stoked on printing or whoever it is. Uh, but that's, that. I think that's a bunch of BS. I think that we, should put more effort into being authentic and organic. Um, there's nothing wrong with pulling out your phone on the, on the production floor and just showing a video of what's happening right now in the moment. And if you can catch someone smiling while they're doing their job, that is like, that is the ultimate, like that is what people want to see on Instagram. And I don't, I don't know if this happens to you, but like if I'm scrolling through my feed or whatever. So I, I think there's a couple things. Um, once again, people are on social media to be entertained, right? Like they're, they're there to be taken away from the wherever space they're in or like they're, so keep that in mind. Like uh, it's fine to sprinkle in like some deals, like, Hey, we have this deal going on. Um, but for the most part, we try to keep most of all of our content, like informative, entertaining, um, or just like something that we just want to share, you know? So it, it's never really pushing uh, anybody to really buy or to sell, you know, it's just where we're, we sprinkle that in here and there um, because we want, first and foremost, want to entertain because that's why people are on social media. Um, and then B, it's just like start, you know, just like get going and you just never know and play to your strengths. You know, like to me, I'm not like a super great person to just like constantly film myself and place it, put it out in the world, you know? So I don't really do that much. So we like to put a lot more of the team, but if like, I've seen a lot of uh, people on Instagram where it's like their strength is them being on camera, filming themselves, talking about their company or product and all that stuff. And they're, it's awesome. It's really good. So just kind of playing to those strengths um, and in ultimately finding the platform that fits best, you know, so maybe Instagram isn't the platform for your business. Um, you know, there's so many out there that can uh, be really beneficial for your, for your uh, business, but it's just, you know, you have to try it. You have to, you have to figure it out and you have to get, and at least give it six months. I would also say that, you know, just at least give it like a six month runway and being cons be consistent and you'll start to figure out like what people like to see, you know, because kind of what Brett was saying is like, sometimes we, we, we do these really produced videos and it gets like a hundred views. And then we like show that video of a screen being made and it gets like 15,000 views. And we're like, oh, okay, cool. Maybe we need to show more screens getting made, you know? And like that video was literally like a phone popping out, like, oh, this, this is a cool screen getting made, you know? So um, it's just hard to say what people, what's going to hit and what people are going to like. So it's just consistency is key. And, and what, like what you said, Claire, it's like that video might come back around, you know, in six months and then like people are sharing it and then it goes, uh, it goes viral. So. 
I think there's also some really simple tools that you can use. And I think people are becoming a lot more familiar now that the only way we're able to talk to each other is through Zoom calls. But um, certainly like having like a portable light to carry around with you so that you can light an area better. And then um, if you get a gimbal, uh, like a um, like an Osmo or something like that is basically something that can hold your phone and keep it steady. And so that way you can do panning and stuff like that. And it looks really smooth and you're just using your iPhone, but it, it looks like it's a really nice camera. Um, just a couple really something, I think they're like a hundred bucks or $200 or something like that. So like our phones are so nice now and they have really nice cameras. You can make really great looking video and take really great looking pictures uh, just from your iPhone and make a really nice looking gallery wall. Agreed. I think people are always intimidated to use all this crazy equipment all the time to produce really high quality content. But like you're saying, Brett, our phones, I mean, it's just amazing that there's a whole computer camera, video camera system in this tiny little thing we all carry, um, but it's actually really great as long as you know good lighting, like you're saying, um, understanding composition and things like that. It's, it's, you have it, the tool right in your hand. Thank you both so much for doing this interview with me today. I'm sure everyone really appreciates the amazing knowledge that you guys dropped. So we really appreciate it. Thanks. Perfect. Hopefully you guys got some good takeaways from that round table. I'm excited to bring Brett, Kevin, and Claire back on to kick off a Q&A. Feel free to ask anything about Instagram to build your business. We already had a few questions come through, uh, so we'll start there. And then if you want to um, fill in additional in the chat um, or at the bottom of the screen uh, if you're on your phone, and we'll do our best to, uh, to get to them. Do we have uh, our gentleman yet? Yes, Brett is joining, and I think we're just waiting on Kevin. Okay, awesome. Oh, it's Kevin. Perfect. All right, guys, if anyone has any questions, be sure to put them in the chat so all of us can answer these. Claire, I think this first question is for you if we want to just jump to that one while we're waiting for the guys to join. So this sure. one says, I like spending my time on content for my shoppable feed, but find stories so much harder. Do you have any suggestions? Sure. Um, I believe there's actually a stat that says something about, um, I think there's like 500 million people use Instagram stories daily. So it's definitely an important channel for brands to use. Um, I think that's Instagram stories are the first thing that I see when I'm on Instagram. It's at the very top of your Instagram page. And so it can be the first thing people tap on before they even get to their uh, post of yours whenever they're scrolling. So I definitely think maximize on stories the best you can. Um, it doesn't have to be super produced content, kind of like we've talked about previously. In the beginning of this webinar, I highly suggest, you know, just using your phone and getting behind the scenes content of your brand or your business to show your audience. As a consumer for myself, that's the first thing I go to. I consume almost all of my content through stories. And with all the retargeting nowadays, I swear to God, there's a new brand every 30 seconds. But here I am consuming it to the point where I feel like it's part of um, content that I've elected for, which is an interesting shift in how we all consume information so um as a as a consumer i agree <laughs> definitely yeah i think we have um kevin and brett so if they can turn their cameras on oh no awesome oh hi guys hey. what's up guys how's it going hey, how's it going you. thanks so much for joining all right we already had some questions come through so i'm going to throw them out to you guys um it says, one of the questions is, what's the easiest way to get my posts and profiles seen? So Brett or Kevin, what do you guys do to really boost posts for your shop specifically? Um, I mean, there's a couple ways. I mean, you can obviously pay to do it. You can, um, you know, pay to target a certain audience. Like if you want more people in the streetwear industry, um, you know, you can build out profiles inside of Instagram's uh, ad targeting campaigns. 
um, and you would just essentially say a, a lot of uh, fans of certain streetwear brands that you also want to attract. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of or things you can do organically as far as um, just consistency of posting, you know, so making sure that you're posting every single day, um, ideally multiple times a day, because you never know when the algorithm is going to hit in your favor. Um, so uh, those are two like really big ways that you can grow your following or get seen uh, as far as what we've uh, encountered. So paid and then consistency in engagement, really. Yep. Activity. Got it. Yeah, I think that, you know, the, the quality of the content is super important in that. And we see like uh, if you're trying to get noticed, you know, showing things that the people that you want to notice you want to see. And so that's kind of like stepping outside of who you are and trying to get into their brains and, and, and look back at yourself, which I think a lot of people super, like really struggle with um, in our industry. When we're if we're selling T-shirts like our end user probably just doesn't want to see a picture of a T-shirt every day. Uh, but there are certain things that they do pay attention to every day that maybe we could captivate them with. So getting in the you know, as it's like being a sales guy, you got to get in the head of your consumer. Absolutely. And get, yeah, content they want to see. And I think also being clear on your, your brand identity too, and, and telling that story through this, uh, through this marketing vehicle. Let's see. Um, oh, this is, um, well, I think again, for both of you, but are you guys the ones grabbing the photos and videos or do you have someone on your team that goes out and captures all that great footage? We have multiple people. So we actually kind of took our creative part department recently and, and spun them off into a new company, which is a, a creative agency. And so uh, we basically are saying now like printed threads doesn't handle anything, but we have a creative agency with people on site that handle that. So we're paying a large sum of money a month to, for those people to do that. Now, the main person that is operating our Instagram and, and Facebook on a day-to-day -day basis works for them and is here so he can go take stories all day long on you know what is going on. But he's also planning out, these are the things that we wanna post over the next month, whether it's a, a product special or you know so just certain things that we wanna spotlight. And then we have another guy that comes in once a month that is like a more of a high level uh, photographer and, and videographer that comes in and shoots the content that we have planned out. And uh, usually he'll be here for a full day or a half day and get us, you know, a, a good amount of content to use over that next month span. So we have some very well produced content that we put out and we have some other stuff that's fairly well produced, but not right, on, yeah. <laughs> on that primo level. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Um, yeah, so we, we have um, a, a buddy of mine and he comes in two to three times a week and he just grabs a bunch of content um, and I will try to hop in as much as I can. Um, but he's definitely kind of like been taking the lead a lot more um, on posting and, and getting all that stuff out. Awesome. And it makes sense to make that investment, I think, on the on the team and the support to be successful uh, with the platform. Uh, I think obviously all of all of four of our companies, sorry, all four of our mm -hmm. companies are a little bit larger. There's a lot of people that are at home that are the mom and pop organization or the owner operator. And it's really hard to like figure this piece out. And so I completely understand that. I would like you, like in any organization, like there's gotta be someone producing and there's gotta be someone selling and like creating that team effort of like the sales guy posting the sales stuff and the production guy producing, you know, showing the back of house stuff. I think both of those are important. So if you can just do some teamwork, like photos of like sales guys posting photos of product, production guys grabbing pictures of the process. I think that would, that is a symbiotic team. Absolutely, yeah. And I'll actually um, chime in for what we do at Bella Canvas. Um, for our content, who's running around grabbing photos and kind of who's working on that content, it really varies. Um, if we're launching a new campaign or we have, you know, this webinar to promote, there's quite a few hands that actually go into one photo or one GIF or video. Um, so that can touch, you know, a graphic design team when someone's doing the copy. That can touch a photographer um, who's going to edit a photo, Hello. and then also the person who's, <laughs> and also the person <laughs> who's going to be scheduling that on Instagram and writing the captions. Right. And then on the other side of that is sometimes 
I'll just throw a shirt on the ground and good lighting like we talked about earlier, snap it with my phone, upload it to Instagram, and that'll get a ton of likes. So it really does vary um, kind of on what is successful for or all the stacked time. boxes that always gets stacked boxes, stacked peas. It always cracks me up that that's the, the money maker. Um, and then oh, I know everyone I know. Loves about like branded boxes. Another question was uh, maybe um, Kevin and Brett, you guys could feel this one. Do you feel like sponsored ads actually work to generate sales? You guys see the return? It, it just has to be it just has to be married with good with good content, you know, um, because it can easily become like a, like a trash barrel where you just throw money into it and it just like disappears. Um, but if you can like marry uh, kind of like what Brett was saying, like if you can get in the head of the consumer and really think like, OK, what are the what is my target audience? What do they want? Um, and it might be 50 shirts for five hundred dollars or whatever that is. Um, and if you can do that and you can execute it well, um, but there's a lot of research that I would say you should do in ads um, before you spend any money into it because it can easily be, uh, like I said, just throwing money into a trash can. Um, but if you can do it effectively and you can actually uh, you know, research and it honestly might be worth um, uh, contracting to somebody that is uh, really familiar yeah. with this, yeah, you know, and, and like, I think your money, you're going to spend a little less money on advertising and a little bit more money on this person. Um, but I think you will get a little bit more of an Better effective result. Yeah, outcome. Yeah. Yeah, I think it, it comes down to a plan. Like, all of this stuff should be planned out. There's an amount of stuff that should be organic and off the cuff. But um, when you're going to spend money, there has to be a plan, right? So if you, spend time and you think okay this this is the thing that we're going to market this month and we want it to be really effective right now we're in the winter something that you might market would be fleece or you know outerwear or something like that right so you sit down and this plan needs to be made in the fall right not not five minutes before you do it plan it out we're going to post this these uh pictures on this week and then we're going to come edit with a sponsored ad too because a lot of times this the sponsors ads don't show up on your Instagram wall. So you want to have um, other pictures or videos to support your sponsored ad on the wall so that when they click on that ad and go to your profile or whatever, they see some other similarities or they can get more info. And then what is the call to action? Like is when they click that sponsored ad, are they going to go to their profile? Or are they going to go to your website? Or are they going to go to, are they going to swipe up and go straight to a product? Right. And that's where like, a lot of times in our industry, things are super ambiguous, right? It's like someone wants to get shirts made and they're like, how much for 10 shirts? And it's like, I don't know, the price could be 20 bucks a piece or it could be $150 a piece. That's super difficult. But if you put together some sort of package and there's this call to action that says, hey, for 500 bucks, you get this and someone can just click on it and make it a super easy streamlined process. Because I think any e-commerce person will tell you there are always a million abandoned carts, right? And it's probably because something got really convoluted in the process and people were like, I can't do one more click. I'm out. Right. No, I, th I think But that uh, going back to say the sponsor post, like, yeah, like I think you got to you got to say, hey, I'm I want to make this much off of it. I'm going to put this many dollars into it. These are the amount of people that I want to click on it and have set all these goals make sure you're executing to plan and and you're actually seeing that return in the end got to be smart and strategic about your investment there let me right. see uh oh uh brett you had mentioned this one uh, someone asked is there any special equipment to use with your phone for creating content what was the um <laughs> i'm gonna watch it if i guess it the the uh piece of equipment that you recommended <laughs> say it <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I, I just recommended a gimbal. Uh, yeah, a gimbal. So like uh, uh, DJI makes the Osmo. Uh, there's there's several of them out there. They're usually around a hundred bucks, but it's basically like a little handheld device that you attach your phone to. They use them for you know steady camps and stuff for you know more professional. But these cheap ones, you can like hold your phone on it and it stabilizes your phone that way you're not like holding your phone and like you know sh if, if it's me i'm like shaking and everything <laughs> looks terrible right so it makes it look super smooth and you can control it and you can even make it focus on your face so that if you're like holding it 
and like turning and stuff. The cam, the the phone turns with your face. So it's super cool. And you said light was really important as well. I, I'm lit right now, um, just to make the quality of the the images um, that much better. Right, yeah, and Megan, I think we will send a link out to everyone that has links to Halo lights and different equipment that Brett mentioned, and we'll also tack on some additional things um, in a handout at the end. So great. Um, just want shout out to uh, Nolan, uh, our Frozen uh, sing along uh, guy. Um, he said, "How do you measure success in a social media strategy? I see a lot of effort and noise in our industry with very few likes or comments." Yeah, that's on you, Kevin. Yeah, you know it, it, it's it's all it's always hard to say because there's different outcomes for what you want. You know, do you want engagement? Do you want sales? Do you you know? Once again, it's what Brett kind of mentioned was just like having an end in mind and having a plan to start with that because you can post the most engaging content, but it really doesn't do anything for you, right? Like it just has people, you know, engaging with your brand. Um, I think it's like if you have a, like a singular product, like, you know, like if you have a t-shirt, um, you weren't are running a t-shirt brand, um, obviously a successful campaign is getting, is selling the most t-shirts possible, you know? Um, so what does that look for your, for your brand and, and being realistic? If you have a hundred followers, that might be two or three shirts. It's a successful campaign. Um, you know, so really just determining, uh, like what your outcome is, um, for us, it's mostly just, uh, having a portfolio online, you know? So uh, if we have something take off, that's really great. If something doesn't take off, it's no problem because we can reuse that content later on um, or we can use it in valuable ways like um, in webinars with customers. When they ask, hey, do you guys do printed sizing labels? Cool, we could bring up, um, you know, a picture of when we were doing printed sizing labels, so. The, yeah, I think also- gallery is super cool. Yeah. And I I'll, and sorry, Claire, for just running you over. But uh, <laughs> the uh, the gallery is like super cool. But uh, also like it it is a really hard thing to manage. And I think that as far as like your expectations and and what the outcome is, because as Kevin said, is like sometimes it's just showing up enough times that the customer's like, oh yeah, now I remember where I should get T-shirts from. Um, and like that's that's a really hard measurable i think for us it has to be measured by sales in general and we don't always know where what channel those sales are coming from whether it's from instagram we can ask right but we don't always know the, the full thing the reality is if you want to have that like top line credibility for you know what what city you're in or whatever as as like the Oh, they are the print shop in our city. You know, you just have to be super visible, and that's going to come with social media, among many other uh, visible points, right? So, you just want to be the first person that someone thinks of. And if you sell a half a million dollars worth of T-shirts this month, then you need to dedicate a percentage of that to advertising next month. And I think you know, you mentioned. It kind of elaborating a little bit, it's hard to track that this transaction was tied to this Instagram post, but you, you said it right. It's all about visibility and ultimately you're driving affinity for your business, for, for your brand. So it's just creating more awareness and you do that through quality content, the right cadence um, and all of those aspects. Yeah. Like how, I mean, how, how does discount tire measure like how many people came and bought a tire because they had a commercial with a grandma throwing a tire through the window, right? Like I haven't seen that one. it's, it's an, right. It's like not an immeasurable, it's an immeasurable product, but it has to be done and people spend a lot of money on it because it works, you know? So it's, you know, yeah. there's no, like you put a coin in and you get this but, out. Yeah. Like it, 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 <laughs> Yeah, it definitely, and, and, but if you are paying for ads, um, I would highly recommend looking into um, applications to track those conversions and things like that, because if you're spending money on it, you definitely want to track it. If you're not spending money, you're just looking for organic growth. Um, I, you know, I think it's just all, it, anything that comes from it is good. Um, but, you know, there are uh, certain things, especially when you're talking about like Facebook pixels and all that, um, to actually 
you could really you could really get granular depending on the, how how uh, deep down the rabbit hole you want to go to like where people came from. But that is really for like helpful from a product standpoint, not necessarily from like a custom apparel company standpoint, in my opinion. But right, right. And I would also like to add something that I think when it comes to measuring success in a social media strategy, you can also look at the past. And I, for example, we have a street fleece campaign that we have done pretty large campaign for um, two years in a row. And I think the first time we did it, it was really successful. And then the second time it was even more successful. And I think what led to that was um, just not being afraid of change, not being afraid of improvising. And we went bigger and harder, better with our campaign this year. We invested a little bit more into it, um, especially a lot more screen time and web time as far as um, how long the content was living. And we just weren't really afraid to put it out there for, I think we had it running for like three to four months. And so, um, yeah, I think just like, don't be afraid to try new things and um, just keep going at it. And you can measure your social media strategy by how successful each campaign is every time you do a new one. That's great. Uh, next question, uh, I think for any of you, uh, how can we maximize our business account if we don't have a large number of followers? For example, you need to have a large number of followers to include a link in an IG story, which I've actually learned that my, I've tried to do it myself and I'm not allowed to <laughs> as an <a> individual. <laughs> I think you have to have like, 10,000 followers to swipe up and all that stuff. You just got to grow it. You know, there's, there's um, uh, like we talked about earlier, there's different channels or different methods for growing, like use hashtags that are relative to, to who you are as your business. Like I would steer away from only putting the hashtag screen printing or, you know, those types of things. Cause you're probably just going to attract more screen printers, but like, look at your audience. Like, I'm in Fort Worth, Texas. If we put a hashtag that says Cowtown or Panther City, you know, th those types of things, like people that are just looking through stuff about their city are going to find us. So just get get creative uh, with your hashtags and then like go like be active. You have to be active on social media to get followers. So like if you're following all your favorites, let's say you're i'm just going to go with cowtown because we're in fort worth and by the way we had a giant rodeo here last week which is makes no sense but anyway so the uh it's, so if we if i say that my customers are cowboys or they're uh, rodeo people right i'm going to go follow all these rodeo accounts and i'm going to comment on all these rodeo accounts like cool cowboy boots man I don't know what you say, but like you're commenting on that and you're showing that you're active Indeed. and people might, might go click on your, uh, yeah, click on your thing and go to your bio and be like, these people look interesting. I'm going to follow them. So the more that you engage with other people, the more people will engage with you. Yep. Yeah. And I, um, there's a really helpful tool in Facebook. It's called, um, in the Facebook business manager, um, it's called audience insights. So what you can do is you can actually search like, um, like, you know, what, in Brett's example, like if you really like a cowboy boot brand or something like that, you can actually search their name and then you can see what else those people like, right? So you can see like what TV shows, what all those other things that they like. So, and to go to Brett's point, like really go and engage with those people, meet them where they're at. Um, but, and then the second piece of it is just like, if you post every single day, like I promise, like if you post every single day for the next year, you will see a massive growth in your followers. Like People I promise. It it. Have, yeah, it doesn't have to be like, it doesn't have to be like the most polished, it doesn't have to be like, if, if honestly, if the most, the more real you can be, if you just, just say like, I'm gonna post every single day, um, I guarantee you will see like, I, I can't even quantify like the, the percentage, but you will see like a huge increase in your followers. I think that's really good advice. Just consistency, activity. Again, people are going to, they'll see it on their stories. They'll click. It makes them that much more likely to get that type of content again. Um, I know we have to wrap it up. So last question, you guys have kind of already touched on this. We talked about, you know, planning ahead. We talked about quality of content. Um, someone was asking if you have a daily set schedule, for example, a flash sale is always Tuesdays behind the scenes are always Mondays. Do you guys recommend that approach or, you know, what have you found that works uh, best for, for each of you? 
I wish I would do better. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I like to think of it in terms of highlights on your Instagram account. Um, I, I call those buckets, if you like content buckets. And so you can have, sometimes we have this thing called tagged Tuesdays where we like to feature different people who have tagged us in the previous week um, in their Bella Canvas tees and kind of like what they've been printing on it. Um, things like that you can do, you know, yeah, like Transparency Tuesdays and show behind the scenes of what's going on, you know, in the inner workings of your company. And if you're like all about sustainability, you know, reveal some some facts like we've saved, uh, you know, this much paper this week by doing everything digital or anything like that. So I, I highly suggest looking at your um, Instagram highlights as your content buckets and then you can schedule it that way. Yeah, I think that it's it helps to come up with content when you do have some themes running. We have one called Macro Monday that is, is doing like a, a zoom in shot of, you know, a print uh, just to show details and whatever, which is something that we're in the middle of switching up now. We have like one time a month, we do a customer spotlight on a specific customer. Like I saw a question over here. How do you encourage existing clients to follow you? Like post about them, you know, and tag them, like give them content that then they can share on their Instagram and then all their customers come back and follow you too. That's not a bad idea. Um, but then also like um, we do every month we do a contest. So every month we'll get with one of our suppliers and say like, hey, is there a certain product that we can help you promote this month? And uh, we'll do a giveaway. So we'll give away uh, a small amount of product and and we do one of those contests where you every have everybody has to like, share, you know, whatever comment at tag 79 other friends and then they get entered in a contest right so like you would but we do all that stuff once a month or, or consecutively so that we know like we basically have a schedule for next month already written so you're not standing around on tuesday going hmm, what should i post about <laughs> right and th that goes back to like even having a plan earlier when i was talking about for spending money just having a plan and going after the plan saves you so much time mm -hmm. Wonderful. Well, um, uh, Kevin, Brett, thank you both so much. Um, we, we so appreciate your time and your expertise. Um, so thank you. And uh, to our viewers, you guys will get an email with the recording um, and you can download the presentation content as well. So thank you guys for joining us and we'll see you for our next Bella Canvas live event. Awesome. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Thanks everyone.